Yep. Selamat pagi in Glasgow and Americas. Selamat sore. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning and good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the Petlands Pavilion, a session on restoration and management of peatlands in South Sumatra, science, policy, and practice. I am Himlal Baral, scientist at Climate Change, Energy, and Low Carbon Development Research Team within C4 ECRAF. I will be moderator for this session. Let me introduce briefly the session and its flow for the next 90 minutes or so. First, I will briefly highlight the role of peatlands globally and why we are talking about South Sumatra this afternoon. The session aims and our six great uh, panelists will deliver their uh, presentations uh, and then we will have a discussion, question and answer session. Peatlands are unique wetland ecosystems, very important sink for carbon dioxide. They provide wide range of ecosystem goods and services, provisioning services, regulating, cultural and supporting services. For example, food, fiber, energy, biomaterials, climate regulation, habit, habitat regulation, and so on. Pitlands found in more than 169 countries globally from tropics to the Arctic. It covers just less than 3% of the world's land mass, but it stores more than one third of soil carbon. Average peatlands has carbon pools five times more um, than, um, than any tropical forest. Unfortunately, these peatlands are under great threats from human activity, our own activity, and also from the changing climate itself. And South Sumatra is not an exception. The way we manage our peatlands will, will, will result the positive impact to the climate and livelihood or, or negative impacts. The South Sumatrans, almost uh, 1.2 million hectares of peatlands is under enormous pressure due to large and small scale tree plantation agricultural enterprises and other development activities. Frequent fire and associated health and economic impacts we have seen very recently need to be addressed urgently. According to the BRGM, Indonesian Pitland Restoration, Pitland and Mangrove Restoration Agency, the, the South Sumatra province has the second largest target to restore the degraded peatlands. For example, more than 650,000 hectares of peatland to be restored by 2030, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. So we will hear this from South Sumatra government soon. C4 and partners has been working in South Sumatra um, to, to demonstrate sustainable land use practices, sustainable peatland practices, management practices, and um, using agro silvo fishery approach uh, to demonstrate how um, um, the degraded peatland can be restored for multiple ecosystem goods and services, um, as well as livelihood opportunities, which will be highlighted in this talk. Bringing experts from science, policy, practice, capacity building, or together with funders like donors. This session highlights, aims to highlight how sustainable management and restoration of degraded pitlands or manage the pitlands, natural pitlands like sustainably, contribute to the climate and livelihood goals. And also it supports to sustainable development goals. I will not talk a lot here because we have six prominent uh, speakers um, here today. So which I will briefly introduce now and later they will deliver presentation. Our first um, um, talk will be from South Sumatra's um, uh, governor office, His Excellency Bapak uh, uh, 
uh, Harman Daru is not able to present today, but, uh, but um, Bapak Panji um, Kayanto, head of forestry department will present and, um, and also uh, Bapak Dharma uh, Dhalan, head of peatland restoration agency for South Sumatra government will, will present, will deliver the presentation. And then Ms. Yustitna Artadi from C4 Ecraft, senior research officer will present ecosystem services in peatlands from various restoration and management scenarios. Uh, she will highlight about the, how the management of peatland will deliver um, ecosystem services and how it changes and vice versa. Bapak Bastoni from Ministry of Environment and Forestry, senior researcher from, uh, from South Sumatra uh, will deliver presentation about polluted culture for sustainable peatland management in the tropics, lesson learned from South Sumatra. Then Bapak Dr. Irizal Sodikin will from Sri Vijaya University will deliver his presentation on sustainable peatland management for livelihood and food security. So that's based on our uh, on joint work in South Sumatra. Ms. Sujin Rayong from Asia Forest Cooperation Organization uh, will deliver presentation about capacity building for landscape approach, lesson learned from agroforestry practices on peatland in Indonesia and lesson to uh, South Sumatra. Dr. Inho Choi, researcher from NIFOS, National Institute of Forest Sciences in Korea, will deliver presentation about development of peatland restoration model to respond to climate change. And later, after all, all uh, presentation, we will have a discussion and question and answer session and we'll close shortly. Now, without further ado, I will invite uh, uh, colleagues from, from South Sumatra Governor Office, Bapak Panji uh, Kayanto, Head of Forestry Department to deliver his presentation on peatland restoration and management in South Sumatra. Bapak Panji Kayanto, please. You can share your screen and deliver presentation. Thank you. Terima kasih, Pak Moderator. Jadi, sebelum saya menyampaikan paparan, saya sampaikan permohon maaf dari Bapak Gubernur Sumatera Selatan, Pak Herman Deru, yang sebetulnya ingin hadir pada acara ini, tapi karena ada kegiatan lain, sehingga mau kenal pada kami. Kami hadir di sini, ada berapa orang yang pertama saya Panji Cahyanto kemudian di samping saya sebelah kanan Pak Dana Dalan ketua tim restorasi gambar Sumatera kemudian di sebelah kiri ada Pak Wilman sama Pak Benny dari Dinas Lingkungan Hidup dan Pertanian Sumatera Selatan. Mungkin kita lanjut ini jadi kegiatan restorasi gambar di Sumatera Selatan ini dilatar belakangi oleh kejadian tahun 2015. <tuh> Pada saat itu lebih kurang 736 ribu hektar lahan terbakar di Sumatera Selatan. Dan itu sebagian besar hampir 60-70 persen berada di lahan gambut. Adanya kebakaran hutan tersebut menimbulkan dampak yang sangat mengganggu kehidupan di Sumatera Selatan. Baik itu lingkungan, lingkungan ispu bisa sampai waktu itu sampai ke merah sampai hitam, kemudian Perekonomian juga terganggu karena jarak pandang juga sangat terbatas. Kemudian penerbangan banyak yang tertunda atau berhenti karena pesawat tidak bisa mendarat karena jarak pandang ke lapangan terbang juga terbatas sehingga tidak memungkinkan untuk dilakukan penerbangan. Lanjut aja. Ini berapa dan ternyata berdasarkan identifikasi dari pemerintah Sumatera Selatan hampir 90 sampai 90 persen kejadian kebakaran hutan disebabkan oleh manusia. Jadi jarang yang secara alami terbakar. Jadi kalau kita lihat segitiga api, ada oksigen, bahan bakar, sumber panas. Jadi sumber panas ini hampir 99 persen adalah dari manusia. Lanjut. Ini kita juga sudah menyusun peta rawan kebakaran hutan. Jadi yang warna coklat ini adalah sangat rawan. Yang warna merah lebih rawan, kemudian yang hijau sangat tidak rawan. Dan ini yang warna coklat ini sebagian besar berada di lahan-lahan gambut yang ada di pantai timur Sumatera Selatan. Jadi ini memang perlu kita waspadai bahwa ternyata lahan gambut merupakan daerah-daerah yang sangat rawan terjadi kebakaran hutan. Lanjut aja. Ini kalau kita lihat 
dari 9,1 juta hektar wilayah Provinsi Sumatera Selatan lebih kurang 1,27 hektar ini merupakan lahan gambut baik gambut dalam maupun gambut yang dangkal jadi gambut yang fungsi lindung maupun gambut yang fungsi budidaya lanjut aja lanjut ini kalau kita lihat data time series kebakaran hutan 2015 sampai 2021 di 2015 luas kebakaran hutan lebih kurang 736.000 hektar kemudian 2016 menurun, 2017 agak naik dikit, 2019 naik lagi, jadi tahun 2019 lebih kurang 17.000 hektar yang, eh maaf, 428.000 hektar lahan di Sumatera Selatan terbakar dan alhamdulillah di 2020 menurun, kemudian di 2021 sampai bulan Oktober tahun 2021 lebih kurang 1.200 hektar lahan yang sudah terbakar. Jadi ini data-data ini kita sepakat bahwa data kebakaran hutan berasal dari Kementerian Lingkungan Hidup dan Kehutanan. Jadi satu data, lanjut aja. Ini kalau lihat jumlah spot ada variasi 2015 tinggi, kemudian rendah, dan 2019 naik lagi. Lanjut. Luas kebakaran juga hampir sama dengan tren hotspot. Jadi 2019 736 ribu hektar, kemudian 2016 turun, 2017 sangat kecil. 2019 naik dan 2020 alhamdulillah masih di bawah 1000 hektar jadi 946.000 dan di 2020 kalau lihat trennya agak naik dikit sampai bulan Oktober lebih kurang 1200 hektar. Lanjut. Nah, melihat kondisi seperti itu maka pemerintah Provinsi Sumatera Selatan pada tahun 2016 membentuk tim restorasi gambut berdasarkan peraturan presiden nomor 1 tahun 2016. Tahun 2018 menerima mandat dari Kementerian Lingkungan Hidup dan Kehutanan yang berkenan dengan tugas pembantuan atau TP Restorasi Gambut. Jadi tahun 2018 Provinsi Sumatera Selatan mendapatkan anggaran yang sifatnya tugas pembantuan. Dan di, telah ditunjuk Dinas Lingkungan Hidup dan Pertanian sebagai kuasa pengguna anggaran tugas pembantuan ini. Kemudian ada perkembangan yang sangat, karena memang sangat penting, maka di tahun 2018 sudah ditetapkan peraturan daerah nomor satu tentang pengelolaan dan perlindungan ekosistem gambut. Ini memang kerjasama dari pihak eksekutif dan legislatif melihat pentingnya perlindungan gambut, maka ditetapkan perda tahun 2018. Ada berapa turunan dari perda ini? Yang pertama, pergub peraturan gubernur No, nomor 68 tahun 2018 tentang kelembagaan perlindungan dan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut. Yang kedua sudah ditetapkan peraturan gubernur nomor 69 tahun 2018 tentang pemberdayaan masyarakat dalam perlindungan dan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut. Ketiga, peraturan gubernur nomor 70 tahun 2018 tentang pemberian insentif dan disinsentif dalam perlindungan dan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut dan yang terakhir peraturan gubernur nomor 71 tahun 2018 tentang pola kerjasama perlindungan dan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut. Jadi memang pemerintah Provinsi Sumatera Selatan memandang pentingnya terhadap perlindungan dan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut yang ada di Sumatera Selatan. Kemudian di berdasarkan tugas pembantuan yang diamanatkan ke pemerintah Provinsi Sumatera Selatan, maka ada tiga kegiatan yang menjadi tugas dari PP, jadi tugas pembantuan itu yang pertama adalah rewriting, ini pembasahan, kemudian revegetasi, mengembalikan lahan yang terbakar atau yang kritis ditanami kembali, dan revitalisasi masyarakat. Jadi ini pemberdayaan masyarakat. Dan ini tugas ini memang dikerjakan oleh beberapa OPD sekaligus. Jadi sebagai kuasa penggunaan ada Dinas Lingkungan Hidup dan Pertanahan, tapi ada pejabat pembuat komitmen yang pertama untuk rewaiting pembahasan ini dilakukan oleh Dinas PSDA, kemudian untuk revegetasi dilakukan oleh Dinas Kehutanan, sekarang untuk revitalisasi dilakukan oleh Dinas Lingkungan Hidup dan Pertanahan Sumatera Selatan. Ini ada beberapa kegiatan terkait dengan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut. Jadi 
untuk kegiatan rewetting ini ada berapa kegiatan. Yang pertama adalah pembuatan sekat kanal atau kanal blocking, kemudian penimbunan kanal atau kanal backfiling, kemudian pembuatan sumur bor. Nanti ada datanya nanti berapa yang sudah dibuat di sumur selatan. Kemudian untuk revegetasi, penanaman kembali pada lahan yang sudah terbakar, ini dilakukan dengan berapa tahapan. Yang pertama adalah pembuatan persemen dan pembibitan, kemudian penanaman, kemudian yang terakhir adanya suksesi atau regenerasi alam. Kemudian untuk revitalisasi, ini bantuan ekonomi masyarakat di, yang berada di dalam maupun di sekitar gambut. Yang pertama adalah palu di kalter, itu ada sago palem, ada gelam, ada jelutung, ada talas, rawat, dan lain-lain. Kemudian juga di sektor, subsektor perikanan, peternakan, peternak, pertanian, dan ekotoris. Ini yang tadi bahwa struktur kegiatan tugas pembantuan di Sumatera Selatan, dan di kita juga antara OPD-OPD yang ada di Sumatera Selatan yang terkait dengan kegiatan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut juga ada tim restorasi gambut Sumatera Selatan. Jadi tim koordinasi restorasi gambut jadi yang mengkoordinasi, mengkoordinasikan kegiatan-kegiatan dalam rangka pelaksanaan pelindungan ekosistem gambut dan pengelolaan ekosistem gambut. Lanjut aja. Kalau lima target di tujuh provinsi yang menjadi prioritas pengelolaan ekosistem gambut Sumatera Selatan pada di kawasan Lindung itu ditargetkan 52.510 hektar, kemudian di kawasan budidaya agak luas ini 534.161 hektar, kemudian di kawasan budidaya yang tidak berizin ini lebih kurang 70.213 hektar. Jadi total target restorasi gambut di Sumatera Selatan lebih kurang 656.880 hektar. Ini berdasarkan peta indikatif restorasi gambut tahun 2021 sampai dengan 2024. Lanjut. Ini ada beberapa kegiatan kegiatan tugas pembantuan yang berlokasi di 6 kabupaten di 18 KHG, kemudian meliputi 21 kecamatan dan 50 desa di Sumatera Selatan. Jadi ada Lokasi-lokasi kegiatan berada di Kabupaten Musi Banyuasin, di Kabupaten Banyuasin, di Kabupaten Musi Rawas Utara, di Kabupaten Musi Rawas, kemudian di Kabupaten Okan Komuning Ilir, serta terakhir di Kabupaten Muara Enim. Jadi dari 17 kabupaten kota yang ada di Sumatera Selatan, 7 kabu eh, maaf, 6 kabupaten menjadikan lokasi atau lokus kegiatan restorasi gambut tahun 2021 ini. Lanjut. Nah, ini kegiatan-kegiatan rekapitasi yang sah dilaksanakan dalam rangka kegiatan restorasi gambut. Jadi untuk rewaiting ada pembuatan sumur bor sampai dengan tahun 2021 ini di, dari 2018 sampai 2021 le, sudah terbangun lebih kurang 283 unit sumur bor. Kemudian untuk sekat kanal sudah terbangun selama 4 tahun lebih 1.041 unit, kemudian untuk revegetasi sudah tertanami 70 hektar, kemudian untuk revitalisasi ini sudah dilaksanakan pemberian bantuan kepada masyarakat, pemberian masyarakat sebanyak 82 paket. Bapak, ini waktu, berapa, saat, waktu habis ya, satu menit. Ini berapa contoh kegiatan yang sudah dilaksanakan di Sumatera Selatan, lanjut aja ini, lanjut aja. Ini waiting, revitalisasi, dan revitalisasi. Lanjut. Ini. Mungkin itu yang bisa saya sampaikan, Pak sekalian, dan waktu kami kembalikan ke model kata. Terima kasih. Thank you very much for the very interesting presentation and what I see is partnership is very important for for pitland restoration so like meaningful partnership is uh, is um, most important for restoration of pitland Ma now our next speaker is miss justina artati she will present about ecosystem services in pitland from various restoration and management scenarios justina for it you
uh, thank you Himal for the time uh, and then good uh, morning, uh, afternoon and evening everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to join in these discussions. Uh, um, sorry, I cannot uh, open my camera. Okay. Um, are you present our team works on ecosystem services uh, under various peatland uh, management scenarios in South Sumatra, Indonesia? Uh, I think that uh, Himal already mentioned previously that ecosystem services uh, are the benefit uh, people obtain from the ecosystem. It provides provisioning, regulating, and cultural uh, and supporting services such as for food and then storage and also for uh, uh, human health and also for uh, uh, biodiversity services. Land use change uh, would impact on the ecosystem in providing services. Sustainably managed speed land could maintain the ecosystem in providing of various goods and services. Uh, however, uh, managing ecosystem services is an important environmental challenge for land use policy and decision making. Um, the challenge is spread off uh, between the different land use management. On one hand, uh, there are demands to increase the productivity of provision services for economic improvement. But on the other hand, there are demands to uh, maintain the regulating services and cultural services. Assessing the, enable, assessing the ecosystem services enable the uh, land use planners and managers to have more comprehensive understanding uh, of the benefits from the current land use uh, management and threat of of those benefits uh, under the predicted future uh, land use scenarios. Uh, there are some steps that to conduct the, to assess the ecosystem good and services uh, in the landscape or uh, in the ecosystem or such as on the pitland ecosystem. The first step is the qualitative assessment. Uh, this step is to identify indicators of the key ecosystem by interviewing the expert or doing the survey in the landscape. So we have kind of uh, have uh, indicators that we, we would like to assess actually. And then the uh, second step is to quanti quantitative assessment is to um, quantify, sorry, is to quantify the biophysical condition of the landscape using uh, estimation or regional proxies. And then the uh, final step is to quantify the value of surf uh, surfaces using the economic principles such as carbon and uh, water price. In South Sumatra, we assess ecosystem surfaces on Padang Sugian landscape. It's a pitlands area and it locates in the eastern part of uh, the province. Uh, obvious that the, 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 the government of the province previously informed that the eastern part of the South Sumatra province is uh, prone to the fire of, uh, on the pitland and also uh, face, on the, face the degradation of the pitland. The, the, the Padang Sugihan landscape cover with uh, conservation areas for habitat of uh, Sumatra elephants, uh, which is one of the endemic and flagship species of uh, Sumatra Island. It also covers with uh, a large scale of forest and uh, agriculture plantation, uh, especially acacia and also oil palm plantations. And then the landscape also uh, impacted with the frequent uh, fire and haze which destroy the pitland uh, areas in this uh, landscape. And then also the small scale uh, unsustainable agriculture has been practiced widely by local community. Uh, the, the, uh, for instance, that the sonar practice is the paddy production uh, using a fire for land preparation. Um, the landscape, uh, it's a part of the restoration area, polyviculture, uh, a sustainable management pitland uh, practice has been introduced in this area, although it's still on the uh, plot level.
Okay, uh, we use um, invest to generate the model uh, land use land cover change in the landscape and evaluate the carbon stock uh, up to uh, 2030. So uh, we, we use uh, uh, what is four scenario to, to envision the land use uh, change uh, uh, through the year to 2030. The first scenario is business as usual, is the kind of uh, scenario. Uh, we assume that there is no change of economic framework of uh, the local community and other stakeholders in the landscape, of which that acacia, rubber, uh, oil palm, and rice are the major production in this landscape. The second, the second uh, scenario is um, sustainable management with polyculture. Polyculture is a um, favorable of a sustainable pitland management as as this model provides socio-economic and environmental benefit. We assume that polyculture is practiced in all area uh, for the restoration in the Padang Sudian landscape. And then the third scenario is conservation centric. We assume that the uh, area for the, on the pitland area in this uh, landscape uh, is concentrate for conservation purposes for the food for the pitland and biodiversity to respond to the global concern around the climate pressure such as on the emission because of the fire in the pitland it uh, uh, what is emit the uh, use of a CO2 emission and then the last scenario is uh, intensive agriculture we assume that uh, in until I mean that is a uh, the expand and intensify of drainage of pitland uh, because of the demand agriculture uh, expansion will still continue until 2030. And then also uh, the law enforcement for the land policy uh, is still weak uh, in this uh, area. So this is uh, uh, our uh, assumption to and scenario and assumption to develop the model. And then uh, based on the uh, invest generator, the land use, uh, land use coverage scenario outcomes uh, uh, for the 2030, we can see here that the sustainable uh, management with the, using the polyculture uh, in Mark, uh, what is uh, the, the, the swamp area, the polyculture, uh, uh, the emergence of uh, uh, polyculture will increase about 26% uh, on the swamp forest. And also the sustainable uh, management with polyculture also reduces the barren uh, areas uh, about the 20, uh, 25%. And also it uh, improves the water body uh, of, of the uh, landscape uh, about 0.2%. Uh, and then we see that uh, on the conservation centric, the swamp forest will increase um, more than 40, uh, is around like a 44%. Uh, it is this uh, scenario uh, is compared with the baseline uh, on the 2018. And then uh, about the relative carbon stock and value uh, of the scenario outcomes, uh, we can see here that the sustainable uh, management with polyculture uh, provide a uh, higher economic value chain. Although the carbon, the, the total carbon stock is lower than the uh, conservation uh, centric, which is uh, around. Uh, this is because uh, that um, what is the the carbon stock from conservation centric is only from the pitland uh, pitland or also on the carbon on the pitland. While on the sustainable management, the carbon stock uh, also uh, derived from the, the pitland itself, from the protection of the pitland, and also from the uh, what is the, the, the sequestration of the uh, carbon because of the tree plantation. And then, uh, for the uh, area with the limited data, such as on the rural area, qualitative assessment could be conducted to value the ecosystem services. We conducted assessment of two uh, future land use scenarios uh, in pre village uh, in uh, Ogan Komering Ilir uh, district. This is also part of this uh, Padang Sudian landscape. The first scenario that we propose is a, 
uh, sonar practices as a business as a, as usual scenario. Sonar is a traditional practice for AD production during the dry season and uses fire for land uh, preparation. And then the second uh, scenario is a uh, agrosifo fishery as a sustainable management scenario. Agrosifo fishery is one of the polyculture model which combine tree plantation and food production. Uh, so it combined with the food crops and also fish food cultivation. The assessment shows that the community identifies and value uh, aggressive poultry has higher uh, ecosystem safety food provisions and regulation. So this learning from the ecosystem safety from the South, in the South Sumatra in Padang Sudian landscape for our peatland restoration and management. We summarize that the concept of ecosystem services is being increasingly important uh, in the process of uh, uh, land use planning, uh, particularly in the uh, sub, sub national level. And then uh, the sustainable management scenario with polyculture tends to have higher potential for maintaining uh, social economic development and conserving carbon stocks on pit land. Sustainable management of uh, tropical peatlands uh, should not only conserve the carbon stocks, but also support other livelihood outcomes for the peatland dependence community. Uh, I think this is the end of my presentation and thank you. Thank you, Justina. Very interesting presentation. So you mentioned that sustainable management um, scenario uh, provide the most uh, uh, highest uh, possible outcome in terms of ecosystem services. We will talk this later in the discussion section. So our next presenter is Bapak Bastoni, uh, Ministry of Environment and Forestry, who is senior researcher. He will present Polluticulture for Sustainable Pitland Management in the Tropics Lesson Learned from South Sumatra. Bapak Bastoni, time is yours. Please, uh, please limit your presentation in 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Imlal, uh, for the opportunity was given to me. Uh, Can I you make a full screen, please? Yeah, screen okay. full. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, title of the presentation is culture for restoration and sustainable pitchland management in the tropics lesson learned from South Sumatra. Uh, uh, this is my presentation outline. The first one is uh, about sustainable pitchland management based on pit hydraulic units in, in Indonesia. The second one is about Polyculture practices in South Sumatra, and the last one is about lesson learned. Uh, uh, the first one, sustainable pitchland management based on hydrogen units in Indonesia. In order to sustainable pitchland management, Indonesia government released regulation number uh, 71 in 2014 and number uh, 56 in 2006, uh, about uh, 2016, is eh? about protection and management of pit ecosystem. In the regulation, tropical pitchland in Indonesia were divided into pit hydrological units as uh, small units of pitlands management. Minimum 30% for protection function and maximum 70% for cultivation function. Total PHU area in Indonesia is about uh, 26.5 million hectare and in uh, Sumatra Island, uh, uh, total PHU area is about 9.6 million hex hectare. Uh, this is the illustration concept of sustainable pitchland management based on PEGU. Uh, pit, uh, pit hydrological units consist of three main areas or zone. 
uh, they are protection area minimum 30%, cultivation area maximum 70%, uh, buffer area if needed, not mandatory. Uh, pit dome must be protected. Uh, pit dome function are carbon and water storage, so water retention in rainy season, water releasing in dry season, and wildlife habitat indigenous species of flora fauna. Uh, the second one, uh, paludiculture practices in South Sumatra. Paludiculture means utilizing pit land and or related pit through carbon storage in long period and maintain groundwater level in long year. Uh, paludiculture also means utilizing pitchland for trees and crops cultivation or other commodities without artificial drainage. Through paludiculture, the graded pitland can be restored and utilized for economic activities. Impacts of paludiculture are obstruct pit decomposition, decreasing greenhouse gases emission, and decreasing pit subsidence. In other words, paludiculture is a pit-friendly farming system. Uh, part A, paludiculture practices for revegetation of the graded pit some forest in South Sumatra and Jambi. These activities were conducted since 1995 for revegetation of the graded pit swamp forest in South Sumatra and Jambi province. Result of the activities show that all of the native tree species have a good growth performance. This is a revegetation of Ramin, uh, Bonistilus bancanus in South Sumatra, Oki district. Uh, this is revegetation of Punak local species or tetra, tetra meristra glabra in South Sumatra uh, after uh, three years. Uh, and this is revegetation of Celutung in Pitland, Jambi province after 11 years. 11 years. Uh, result of this activity so that all the native three species have a good growth performance. Uh, growth performance and carbon sequestration of native three species at pit swamp forest in South Sumatra. Uh, based on results of ITTO and FORDA project in uh, 2010 and 2012, uh, this is growth performance of and carbon sequestration of Silutung. Yeah. And this is growth performance uh, and carbon sequestration of Soria Blangeran. Uh, based on this result, paludiculture using native tree species called generates high carbon sequestration and high quality and price wood. Uh, this is comparison between artificial revegetation and natural regeneration at pit swamp forest in South Sumatra. Revegetation of ex burn pit swamp forest through artificial regeneration after 10 years, uh, the forest canopy cover, uh, it's uh, about uh, uh, 80% in 10 years. Uh, but in revegetation of ex burn pit swamp forest through natural regeneration after 22 years, uh, the similar forest canopy cover about uh, 80%. Uh, part B, paludiculture practices for revitalization of local community like livelihood in South Sumatra. Utilizing tropical pitchland for production purposes through paludiculture approach with agro-silvo-fishery models. agro fishery is a farming or land use system that integrates pitland resources from agriculture, forestry, and fisheries in one stretch of land for finding an alternative livelihood for local community. agro fishery 
was only recommended uh, for shallow pit and cultivation areas in a pit hydrological unit. Uh, this is basic design of agro silver fishery. There are three main components uh, of the basic design. Uh, uh, first one is main cultivation area or a vegetation area, embankment or levee, and main fish food, uh, main fish pond with close loop canal. Uh, this is for proportion and function of main components in agro silver fishery pilot models. Main cultivation area proportion 76%, function is forestry food crops during an inundate, uh, fish feeding and spawning ground during inundate, yeah. embankment proportion 12% uh, percent function for the culture crops, fire brick and canal, uh, canal blocking, and fish pond proportion 11% function aquaculture, water storage and fire brick. Fire brick. Uh, this is various farming system and its communities from a gross silver fishery pilot model in South Sumatra. We, we can conduct uh, various uh, farming system. This is re, uh, revege revegetation in agro silver fishery pilot model after three years uh, with Soria Blang Run, a very good uh, growth performance. And this is horticulture crops cultivation on embankment or levee at agro silver fishery in the same location. And this is fish species where found in agro silver fish, agro pilot model suitable for revitalization of uh, uh, local communities like hog. In this uh, pilot model, at least we found uh, nine fish species, local fish species. This local fish species uh, can survive in. Uh, so, water. Sorry, Pak Bastoni, we need to conclude. Your time is up. Okay. You please okay. go Thank to you. conclusion. Thank yeah. you. This is a lesson learned. Paludi culture is a pit friendly farming system and potential for restoration of degraded tropical pitchland and revitalization of local community livelihood. Implementation of agro silver fishery has proven to produce various communities from one stretch of land to increase local community. Paludiculture using native species, forestry species, such as the Dieralowi and etc., called generates high carbon sequestration and high quality and price wood. Assisted regeneration or artificial revegetation using native forestry called restore pitchstone forest less than 10 years and natural regeneration called restore degraded pitchstone forest more than 20 years. Thank you, uh, Dr. Himlal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark Bastoni. This is a great presentation. So your talk showed that polyculture and agro silver fishery are the best um, best possible solutions for uh, to restore the degraded peatland while supporting livelihood to local communities. Thank you very much. Very interesting finding. Our next speaker is uh, Bapak uh, Irijal Sodikin, who is a lecturer from Srivijaya University. So he will present sustainable uh, peatland management for livelihood and food security. Time is yours, Bapak. Thank you, uh, Dr. Himla, uh, for giving me the time and without uh, prolong the word. I'd like to present my presentation with the title Productivity Improvement of Pitland for Livelihood and Food Security, Lesson Learned from Agro Silver Fishery Application. Thank you, Pa Buston. Bustoni already explained what is uh, Agro Silver Fishery concept. So, this presentation I prepare with uh, Professor Rujito Agusuik, I'm coming from Sevilla University. So, I would like to maybe share full screen. Yes. So our research site is uh, in Perigi village. It's located about uh, eastern, southeastern part of, uh, in part of uh, South Sumatra. 
the site is uh, area is about uh, three hectares, and we start these projects in nineteen uh, twenty in uh, in twenty eighteen. It's about two years, and the condition of the pilot field is uh, the site is overgrown with bunches, bushes, and uh, frequently burned in dry season and flooding in rainy season. Uh, the pit the depth is shallow and also medium. And uh, communities using the land is used for uh, rice uh, cultivation by using uh, traditional land preparation, what uh, Ibu Justina say, uh, sonor. And the land also has low biological diversity low, of course, low productivity, and uh, of course, the impacts low income to the community. And the land also has a low pH. And uh, from this uh, characteristic, we think that agro-silvo fishery concept is one of the, uh, the switchable one for the uh, solve the problem. And as Pa Bustoni already explained, what means agro silvo fishery? It means from three words agro silvo and fishery. The first one is uh, uh, we uh, introduce and improve the rice cultivation that normally uh, community uh, use, and then also various other uh, food crops. By improve the rice cultivation, we can increase paddy production. Uh, but two and three times. Of course, this is based on uh, uh, sample. Uh, from this agro uh, uh, agronomic uh, crops, uh, we uh, planted uh, pineapple. As we know, the price of pineapples per fruit is about three and thousand until five thousand rupees. We also planted cassava, local spinach, watermelon, sweet pumpkin, corn. Of course, the farming is still in subsistence level, not commercial, uh, commercial yet. And the second word is uh, silfo, it means silf, uh, silviculture. We introduce also some of forest trees, including bioenergy species. Uh, that's, uh, there are uh, nyamplum, what we call calopium, inophilum, and Carbera mangos, mangas, and then Soria blangeran, uh, Diera lowi, and uh, Blumeo dendron urzi, and Soria passifora. And of course, uh, our uh, result is that from the six uh, species of uh, three crops, uh, there are three species that is. Uh, that are Calopium, Calopium inopilum and Diera lowi and also Kerbera mangas were most up, uh, adaptable trees uh, because they are 90% survival. And then uh, now is about two meter height in uh, two years. The third word is uh, fishery. Uh, we cultivated various fish species, uh, Anabas testudianus, uh, Kana striata and Helasmata taminki and also Clarias uh, gripinu. And uh, until now, there are two uh, species that maybe uh, in the future uh, will give more chance to increase the income of the community. This is uh, Anabas testu testudianus, or we call locally betok. Uh, we have a uh, sampling result about uh, eight kilogram for area about 10 meters square. And the other is uh, local catfish, Clarias grepinu, or we call lele in local name. Uh, sampling result is about seven kilogram or so in uh, uh, 10 uh, square meters. And uh, the land condition now is uh, it's a little better because we manage it uh, by uh, introducing many various uh, crops and also uh, fish. Uh, before projects, the situation like this is many bushes, and then after project is when the, in the, the rainy season like this. And then the impact 
by using agro silvo fishery is uh, one farmer of course farmers more frequently visit and take care of the land and effect of this of course the land uh, will avoid uh, from a fire because the farmer will take care of the land and then uh, we cultivation various crops forest trees and uh, fish species it means that we improve the land diversity and then uh, we increase also land productivity and then community income and indirectly of course because it's still in a subsistence farming uh, we can improve the nutrition quality of the communities i think uh, that was uh, my uh, pretension presentation by uh, imlal and uh, we would like to acknowledge to c4 and nifos for supporting the activities and this is our project teams professor Gito, myself and Dr. Munanda and Dr. Amin and Dr. Sarno. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Pak Irijal, so it's, uh, it's great. And also you manage uh, time very well. So great to see that agro silvo fishery provides uh, excellent opportunity, like a potential, although it's, uh, it's still a small scale research, but we, we have a plan to expand this further um, um, this year and beyond. Thank you so much. Um, our next presentation is uh, Ms. Sujin Rayong from EPOCO, Asia, Asian Forest Cooperation Organization. So she is a senior project officer of EPOCO. She will talk about capacity building uh, for landscape approach, lesson learned from agroforestry practices on peatland in Indonesia. And she will link the lesson to um, to South um, Sumatra. Time is Thank yours, you, Sujin. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you very much for inviting Apoko to this wonderful event. Um, today, we would like to share uh, one of our story from from uh, the project. Actually, this is coming from uh, uh, next island of Sumatra, Kalimantan. But I hope uh, this story. Uh, is uh, giving you all of us a uh, small uh, humble insights uh, to, to, to bring all of us. Um, to whom uh, who are not familiar with our organization, let me briefly introduce our organization, APOCO. Uh, Asian Forest Cooperation Organization is a treaty based intergovernmental organization uh, formalized in 2018. So capacity building uh, activity is a very much critical role of our organization. So we established uh, the regional education and training center in 2018 in uh, Mobi, Yangon, Myanmar. Uh, in 2020, we ob obtained observer status in UN General Assembly and became an ODA eligible international organization accredited by uh, OECD in today, 2021. Currently, we have 15 member countries, including, of course, Indonesia. Our vision is a greener Asia with resilient forests, landscapes, and communities with a mission to strengthen cooperation in the forest sector uh, to address the adverse impacts of climate change. Um, we have five uh, different uh, strategic priorities in forest and forestry sector among which uh, I'd like to highlight the second one, supporting research and development in climate change adaptation approaches. So let us uh, go into the project site. So the project title is Capacity Building for Landscape Approaches uh, to Support the Sustainable Natural Resources Management in Brunei, Darussalam, Indonesia, Philippines, and Singapore. This is uh, the multi-country project Shortly saying, Afoko Bips project. Uh, the, the duration is three years and total fund uh, is 0.5 US dollars. And to Indonesia, the focal uh, implementing agency was Forest Research and Development Center under the Ministry of Environment Forestry. The project concept is uh, widely to enhance the level of understanding on the landscape approaches. Uh, 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 so, so, so in case of Indonesia, they established 
the peace swamp rehabilitation model for us and conducted capacity building actions towards the sustainable natural resource management through workshops, cross-country visits, module development, and trainings. So this is the all very broad uh, concept of uh, the, the BIPS project. So in case of uh, Indonesia, as you can see, um, sorry, uh, this, this uh, landscape is uh, uh, central Kalimantan, uh, uh, our project site when we visited in 2018, uh, which uh, is uh, three years after the big fire. So the fire uh, is already uh, uh, recognized as a natural national disasters at the time and became one of the major sources of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, of course, there were many reasons uh, and among them, the project, uh, the FRDC noticed that the main causes of uh, the crisis of disappearance and degradation of tropical peatland in Indonesia uh, were human impacts uh, surrounded by socioeconomic pressures. So the project um, to in 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 order in in including the the the, the seeking adaptive species for the rehabilitation of afterburned uh, uh, PSF, uh, but at the same time, the project also adapted people-centered development through a landscape approach, building human capabilities, people's well-being and quality of life. So it's a kind of environment and uh, people uh, the balance the project. So uh, the project has three-year milestones. So in the first year, the project started to establish two hectare demo plots at Tumbang Nusa, uh, Kalimantan. Uh, so while preparing the demo plots, uh, we also conducted a capacity building activity. Uh, actually, this capacity building is conducted by a local uh, farmer. So the so local farmer uh, is working as a trainer. So he provided uh, the agroforestry training using his farmland uh, to how to cultivate uh, agroforestry uh, species in peat soil. In the second year, the project also started the research on identification on microbes to decompose wood debris. And at the demo plot, uh, the local government is started the capacity training uh, on community-based peatland management. In the last year, the central government started the organized national workshop on PSF landscape restoration, and also they invited the other project staff for organizing cross-country visits to, to, shame, uh, to share the, uh, the knowledge gained from the project. So um, as you can see, uh, this is our demo plot designed to test, to test adapted uh, uh, agroforestry uh, and tree species uh, to peatland uh, restoration and to use uh, this site as a learning site, learning, learning place uh, for community-based peatland management. And also this gentleman uh, on the left side uh, is, a, is that local farmer and also businessman and also our trainer uh, in, in, in our project site. In, and also uh, he trained the villagers uh, directly based on his experience over a decade. Uh, he already had adapted skills and knowledge to manage and optimize uh, uh, peatland soils. So he he know he shared his know-how how to manage this kind of alluvial soils of uh, peatland. And this experiment was also very much important to us. Uh, soil microbes on the decomposition of wood waste is is very very critical to peatland. Uh, because uh, this increased amount of wood debris uh, can, can reduce potential repeated fire uh, risks in peatland areas. Uh, and also, accordingly, it could improve soil um, conditions as well. Uh, and, and this, the last part is, uh, is uh, findings that we, we found during, uh, while implementing the project. The research also 
uh, could uh, support the local farmers in making soil compost for plantation in the end. So farmers in the end, they do not have to buy fertilizers or manures uh, from the local market. So considering the pit soil conditions, it is quite good uh, news uh, in the end uh, to, to, to utilize this kind of a research uh, result to, to save a lot of uh, uh, money. So from this uh, uh, project activities, we would like to share three findings and observations. So firstly, uh, capacity building on community-based peatland management is critical to long-term strategy in uh, peatland rehabilitation. So canal establishment, uh, as already uh, uh, previous speakers already mentioned several times, is very helpful to farmers understand the importance of maintaining what level. And also training at this demo plot is also good. They learn, they can grow agricultural crops, raise local fish, uh, animal husbandry, produce edible mushroom, charcoal. And this kind of incentive, we can, if we can adopt incentive schemes and also the uh, in incentive schemes, we can, this kind of uh, development of an integrative uh, mechanism can naturally link to the development of uh, the local marketplace. And the second one is uh, you need to, um, when, when we develop this kind of uh, peatland rehabilitation uh, activity, we need to carefully see and ask uh, how to encourage uh, voluntary engagement of local farmers. Uh, it, this is uh, one of our observations from our project site. Uh, we, all of local farmers already knew that the eco-friendly agroforestry practices are very much important and know, uh, very, uh, sorry, uh, good. But, uh, but, but initially uh, it is quite expensive uh, because they have to buy mineral soil, manual, inorganic fertilizers. They have to pay labor costs. Uh, for land preparation and planting. So, so they, they, the many farmers are still reluctant to invest uh, because the, until they, they, they have to wait for quite a long time to, uh, for, for economic uh, return. So- Sujin, sorry, your time is running out. Yeah, Please so, uh, yeah. so uh, this kind of uh, uh, science-based uh, uh, support is quite uh, important. Lastly, institutionalization is for the sustainability is quite uh, uh, good uh, uh, in the end. So, uh, uh, so such as the Pitland Agroforestry Farmers Group uh, may be also a good uh, supportive tool uh, to increase the land ownership of local farmers. And also based on this kind of uh, um, local practices, uh, agroforestry, and also this uh, local government can increase uh, the idea into the ecotourism uh, using the peatland uh, natural environment. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sujin. Thanks for the great presentation. You highlighted three key components for successful peatland restoration, community-based uh, peatland uh, management, active and voluntary contribution from local farmers, which uh, may be voluntary, maybe we need to discuss a little bit later, uh, how um, farmers can contribute and institutionalization of sustainability and land ownership and scaling up from, from plot scale to, um, to the project um, from, um, from pilot to the actual implementation. Thank you so much. Our final speaker, last not but least, is Dr. Inho Choi from NIPOS, National Institute of Forest Sciences, Republic of Korea who will talk about development of peatland restoration models to respond to climate change. Time is yours, um, Dr. Choi. Sujin, can you stop sharing?
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm so glad to have a presentation today's uh, Pinland Pavilion, and I'm working at uh, National Institute of Forest Science. I'm Eun Ho Che, and the presentation title is Pitland Restoration Project and its Contribution. The first part is role of forest in climate change. The forests are known as the best solution for carbon neutrality. Forests have an essential function of mitigation the climate change. For supporting the function, it is required to adopt socio-economic approach such as buying back carbon credits and investment on the carbon offset cost, and simply planting more tree rather than logging. Those efforts could be capitalized as part of the net zero emission to the carbon neutral society. To support the international movement for achieving carbon neutrality, the South Korean government announced its 2050 carbon neutral strategy, highlighting five core factors to be implemented. The key elements are like that uh, slide. In accordance with the policy framework, a community development model through the restoration of Pinland in Indonesia is being developed in cooperation with C4 and NIFOS. Through the community-based uh, development model, Korea government wants to participate and contribute to sustainable green growth. We have 10 years plan, we have 10 years plan and budget to support Pinland. The budget is not a huge amount, but I'm sure that we can make great and big step for restoration of Pinland and enhancing the service. Uh, second part, Indonesia cover approximately 47% of on the earth. However, nearly 50% of Indonesian Finland have degraded since 1980 due to the logging, drainage, flash and burns plantation, besides food security issue triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic are threatening the remaining peatland. So therefore, a scientific and tailored community development model is required for restoring Indonesian pinland and improving the livelihood of local communities for sustainable management of pinland and their society. So NIFOS introduces a community development model addressing pinland restoration and the livelihood of local community jointly with the C4 and NIFOS. First of all, the project site is located in Berigi village, South Sumatra in Indonesia. At this site, we will restore the pine land by planting trees, other fruit trees, and crop com combined with inland water fishery. According to the model design, local environment and uh, we, uh, this model, local environment and preference. All the progress, including the settlement of the project site, about 10 hectares, market value analysis of the fruit and fish and preference sur survey for local. All this kind of progress are being discussed between the two institutions and the local community. Here are the details about our two proposing model of the project. Model A is an agri-silver culture and model B is an agro-silver fishery. Model A focuses more on the reforestation of the pinland. We designed this model to plant two different species in the pinland while planting fruit tree alongside the plantation. 
Model B is also to plan three. However, this model gives more weight to increasing the community livelihood near the pinland by intercropping, planting fruit tree, and growing fish in the canal. Therefore, we expect that the crops, fruit, and fish from the Model B site will enhance their income of the local people, so they do not need to damage the pinland for their living anymore. We have to discuss more and set the details and after that, which one is more suitable and sustainable for the society. This ODA uh, project of Pinland restoration is closely related to the global vision for a sustainable world. For example, we could identify the linkage between Pinland restoration and SDGs. Among the 17 goals, the Pinland restoration efforts have major connection with SDGs 13 and 15. Not only SDG 13 and 15, our project is also directly and indirectly linked with other SDG goals to seek the synergy between the project and the issue on sustainable development. Our project is a joint study uh, by CIFO and NIFUS, a part of global partnership toward the carbon neutral and sustainable sustainable work covered by SDG 17. This co collaboration provides agro-technology education to the resident who meet SDG 4, repre representing quality education. Also, our community development model is designed for the local to increase their income from various sources of profit, including crop and fruit cultivation and inland water fishery, while restoring the peatland forest, which contribute to achieving the SDG 8, decent work and economic growth. SDG 4 and 8 could also contribute to SDG 1, 2, and 5, which reduce poverty, hunger, and gender based on discrimination. In addition to the linkage between our project and the SDGs, it is also need to shed the light on the value of forest and pinland restoration. Through applying nature-based solution, NBS are efficiently addressing societal challenge based on nature, namely forest. Moreover, NBS support governance-based and action-oriented approach to peatland restoration and societal issue. Considering the full feature of NBS above, applying NBS to our project is helpful in terms of tracking both peatland restoration and societal challenge of local community in the project site. Therefore, NBS application to the project might help provide benefit for human and nature by utilizing the IUCN global standard for NBS to design, verify, monitor, and evaluate our project. This is very beginning step uh, of our model, but uh, all of my colleagues and experts can join and share the idea. I would like to invite all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Very interesting presentation. You highlighted the um, role of uh, forest, trees, and pitlands on climate change mitigation, and also you linked about nature-based solution concept. So we have uh, done our all great presentations, and now I would like to thank all of my, my panelists, but uh, please uh, bear with us. We have several very good questions, uh, as you can see here. Um, so I will start with uh, 
Bapak Bastoni. So please, uh, your um, question is liked by many people and this is very important. Maybe when you re respond this question, you can also talk briefly about the, the question, third questions. Um, so could you please tell us more about the difference between assistance or artificial regeneration versus natural regeneration of forest in, especially in peatlands? And probably you can also give a positive benefit of uh, polluted cultures uh, and, and, the, and the key barriers. Can you please respond this very briefly, maybe three to four minutes, Pak Bastoni? Over to you. You can see the question in your speaker view, yeah. Uh, please, will you see now, I can, can I translate the question? Okay, Sina, you are mute, muted. Please translate. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Okay, I have to open. So uh, there are several questions for you, Pak uh, pa Bastoni. Is uh, uh, the first is uh, for someone that uh, work on the peatland restoration in Europe, uh, and then he is a uh, very or she is very interested on the uh, your experience in Southeast Asia. How quickly the tropical peatlands take the respond uh, to respond uh, to restoration intervention? Jadi uh, berapa lama? Uh, apa sih intervensi restorasi itu bisa memulihkan kembali uh, uh, peatland di tropik di daerah tropik pak? Uh, uh, Oke, okay. I'm sorry, I, I answer in bahasa uh, and please be used in to translate for my answer. Uh, jadi apa uh, restorasi hutan rawa gambut? dalam pengertian restorasi ekosistem itu mungkin tidak akan mungkin dicapai dalam hanya beberapa tahun ya. Tetapi dari pengalaman kami itu apa restorasi yang sudah kami lakukan yang paling cepat adalah restorasi hidrologi ya, rewetting itu kemudian dilanjut dengan restorasi vegetasi. Jadi eh, jika kedua aktivitas eh, restorasi itu dilakukan maka eh, dua hal sudah bisa dilakukan, maka upaya eh, awal untuk merestorasi ekosistem gambut secara keseluruhan itu akan di, bisa dimulai. Gitu. Jadi eh, kami dari pengalaman itu menunjukkan bahwa eh, dengan restorasi hutan melalui artificial revegetation, itu dalam hitungan antara 8 sampai 10 tahun hutan gambut kita udah bisa direstorasi ya jadi cepat sekali tetapi apabila kita mengandalkan permudaan alam natural regeneration maka eh, pemulihannya akan butuh waktu dua kali lebih lama jadi dari hasil kami itu untuk artificial revegetasi butuh di bawah 10 tahun kemudian di atau untuk natural regenerasi butuh 20 tahun lebih. Barangkali itu, Bu. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, thank you uh, Pak Bastoni for the uh, response. So, Pak Bastoni informed that the, the combination between rebating uh, is uh, the faster thing for the uh, peatland restoration to improve the, uh, in the interventions and uh, followed by the revegetation. So the combination between two could uh, uh, accelerate the, the intervention for the tropical uh, peatland restoration. And based on the experience of the Pak Bastoni uh, with the uh, artificial revegetation, it takes uh, eight to ten years to restore the uh, degraded peatlands uh, in the tropics. Uh, in the South Sumatra, based on the Pastoni uh, research area. And then on the natural regeneration, it takes about uh, two times longer than the artificial reputation. So I hope that the question for, uh, and the response from Pastoni could uh, 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 um, uh, answer your questions. Thank you. Imla. Yeah, thank you, Justina and, and, and Pak Bastoni. So there are uh, several questions. So we, we will definitely 
are not able to respond all, but we will make sure these are responded um, and, and posted in Pitland Pavilion website and also C4 website later. But I will go to the next question, uh, which uh, may be very interesting. So BRZ, did the COVID-19 affect the Pitland restoration activities in Sumatra, Salatan? Apaka COVID-19, yeah, maybe Justina can ask this question to um and to to the um, government yeah please okay uh, uh jadi pak dari provinsi sumatera selatan apakah covid-19 pandemi uh, apa namanya mem memberikan dampak pada mempengaruhi kegiatan restorasi gambut di sumatera selatan uh, silakan pak uh, probably you can also uh, answer directly in english please uh, pak Panji. Terima kasih. Jadi memang adanya COVID-19 itu mempengaruhi kegiatan-kegiatan restorasi gambut di Sumatera Selatan. Kita, kita lihat di tabel kegiatan tadi, di tahun 2020 itu ada refocusing pertama, jadi ada beberapa kegiatan yang ke, kemarin di-delete, dibatalkan. Jadi dan di 2021 juga target-target kegiatan juga dikurangi. Ini memang karena anggaran tugas pembantuan yang berasal dari pemerintah pusat dan dari PRGM ini sebagian dialokasikan ke, dialihkan untuk kegiatan-kegiatan penanganan COVID-19. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih Pak Panji. So uh, I will respond in bahasa uh, in English. So uh, yes, there is a impact on the COVID pandemic 19 pandemic to the restoration activities in uh, South Sumatra. It, it is because uh, the uh, budget to allocate the restoration, uh, uh, particularly on 2020 and then 2020 uh, from the central government uh, was allocated for uh, the the pandemic uh, to what is to minimize the impact of the COVID-19. So it uh, also the uh, this cutting the budget cutting also impact on the uh, uh, restoration activities thank you uh, okay thank you thank you so the next question i will um, i will request park uh, park irizal to respond about uh, especially we we know this uh, polyculture and agro silver fishery are like it has a huge potential what are the barriers to to implement yeah. in, in the field so number one and when you answering responding this and also you can respond that how long do you expect when ecosystem is start recovering like so it's um, for, for especially for sequestering carbon so can you please briefly toss this to two question pak irizal yeah uh, maybe i would like to uh, uh, answer or respond about the first question i think uh, the problem in uh, management of manage uh, of uh, degraded land is uh, how to uh, constantly look for or take care of the land. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, is the barrier is how to maintain the crops until they are grown big and how to avoid fire. So maybe we can we can plant many many crops, but uh, in certain time they will be burned again because the community is the key factors to take care of the, the land. That's in my opinion. And the second one is, uh, I not so experiment. Which one is, you mean uh, the, the question? Uh, specifically right? time, time when, when it starts oh. uh, storing carbon. So yeah, that's- oh, uh, it's, it's really, really difficult to answer because we have, uh, we have no experience how long it will be become uh, a normal or what, what, whatever. I think uh, uh, I think the long uh, the, the longer it will the better one. Okay. If we, we, uh, yeah. And there are another uh, question also. I think it's uh, it's difficult to answer uh, about scientific scientifically and, and everything about the changing of biodiversity. In my opinion, is maybe maybe I mean, I cannot answer exactly, but maybe we have to collect many data for for comparing yeah, the 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 area whether this uh, ecological causes or because is 
uh, another uh, uh, cause. Maybe that's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So there are so many questions, but now I would like to pass one question to, to Epoco, like uh, Director Lee is here. So could you please uh, help us to like, what are the, what kind of tree species that have been grown well and in the condition in central Kalimantan, which Sujin just presented? And would you like to describe the peat characteristics, depth, water, etc.? cetera? Um, yeah, Lee, please. Thank you for asking me. Uh, the, the exact species, uh, perhaps uh, we may actually uh, uh, send you the species name because I'm not so familiar with scientific name at the moment. Uh, uh, but because of the uh, Kalimantan, uh, the condition, we, we could not uh, uh, many species, just one, uh, two, three species uh, from the farmer's uh, perspective. Uh, to give them some opportunity have the income source. Uh, and uh, as uh, the uh, Dr. Uh, Erizal mentioned, uh, the community people's involvement is very important. So when we uh, select a species, uh, we uh, consulted well with uh, uh, community people so that they can uh, take care of that uh, forest uh, in a longer term. So. Uh, if Susan have any uh, uh, further comments on that, otherwise it is uh, just uh, our uh, answer at the moment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Susan would like to add, but we don't have much time. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you so much for, for these uh, great uh, presentations uh, and your active participants uh, so participation we have several great questions here remaining which we haven't got chance to answer all so we will make sure this uh, save this all question and and respond this collect the answer from all uh, all our panelists and post in our um, website you can visit uh, the same like uh, pavilion website in in, in Shipur. And we will also check if the pitland pavilion can also post these uh, these responses. Now I would like to conclude the session. So there is no way I can summarize all the great um, great uh, presentations here. Uh, but what would I'd like to say? Three to four points is partnership is 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 the key. Meaningful partnership is the key for. Uh, peatland restoration, which is coming from the government side, and the scenario-based approach can provide very interesting insights to planner and policy makers, like what kind of scenarios uh, um, can result to what kind of outcomes. Uh, that's uh, also very, very important. And we we all like uh, learn and agree that. Uh, uh, the polyculture, like uh, cropping in wetland condition, maintaining the the water level and cultivate the trees and other other products and agro silvo fishery, uh, these are the two best uh, alternatives for sustainable restoration uh, of, of sustainable management of peatlands for climate and livelihood goals. And we must um, consider the community-based approach and also active uh, involvement of local communities is key. Land ownership or land tenure should be clarified and scaling up is, is, is key. Like we have seen so many great uh, um, results at plot scale, like a small scale demonstration, but that need to be scaled up to make the real change. And nature-based solutions um, are, are, are becoming increasing, increasingly important to, to um, combat the climate change uh, issues. With this, I would like to conclude um, today's um, session on, um, on uh, pitland um, restoration and management of tropical pitlands in pitlands in South Sumatra policy, practice, and, and, and science. Thank you so much for everyone for your great participation. Um, I would like to thank you all and also Pitland Pavilion team to provide us this opportunity. Um, C4 um, back support team, 
uh, NIFOS, National Institute of Forest Science for funding and other support, FOCO, Asia Forest Cooperation Organization, um, Srivijaya University, and also South Sumatra Governor Office and Ministry of Forest and Soil Conservation, and Ministry of Forestry, Environment and Forestry. Thank you all and have a great afternoon. Thank you.